Hey everybody, welcome to Comics with Bueller. As always, I am Bueller and I have a good friend with me, Demetrius. How are you doing today? Really good. How are you doing? I'm doing great. And you are the owner of Black Box Comics, correct? That's correct. And I'm just going to ask you a hard-hitting question right off the bat. The comic book industry right now, is it crashing? What is going on? Oh man, I mean, I think um, there's a lot of things going on. The economy, for one. Um, I think that certainly affects everyone. Um, so I think, you know, comic shops have li limited shelf space. Um, you know, they take minimal chances, uh, in most cases on Indies. So I think that makes it difficult for the indie community, um, trying to make sales, but, um, without them, obviously we wouldn't be where we all are today and having all these options for indie comics. Um, I think a lot of things, uh, over the years have caused problems. We had the, the housing market crash back in 07, 08. And then you had, you know, COVID that shut down things for a while. Um, and now it just seems the economy is a little shaky. So I think all these, like these three things, and it's not just those, but those have definitely caused the problem, I believe. So how long have you been publishing comic books? Uh, our first title launched March 2017. So that we launched IT. So we're now in 2023. Right. From 2017 to right now, I mean, is it just a totally different ball game than it was in 2017? Well, sure. Um, just printing alone in pri in terms of pricing has probably more than doubled, I believe, for me. Yeah. Um, I, I can't speak for everyone, but that's been my experience. Um, what I was printing, let's say, for half of what I'm printing now, uh, you know, I was printing less at the time than I am now, and I'm still printing. I'm printing more, but I'm printing double, more than double the cost. So, so a lot of money out of pocket just to be doing the same thing, right? And with inflation and everything else, it's not easy for an independent publisher like yourself to make these books happen. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, everyone's got to get paid, right? And inflation is for everyone all around, right? Artists get paid more, writers get paid more. Everybody needs to survive. Um, so, yeah, I mean, prices have increased everywhere. Shipping has increased. And shipping affects retailers a lot. So anything that affects a retailer affects us. But the reason you still do it is because you're passionate about it. And yeah, I love what I do. And I tell people all the time, the people that get into comics aren't just doing it for a business. They're doing it because they're passionate about it, because they have a love and a joy for it. And for someone like you to do this, um, like I said, it's not easy. And you're still doing it today. It's a whole different ball game. But your passion keeps you going. Is that correct? Yeah, you have to have passion in order to keep going. I mean, if, if you don't have that, you know, I think you kind of lose steam and you fall off. And um, there's been a lot, um, from what I understand, speaking with Diamond, that there was publishers that fell off that started before or after me. And it's it's difficult, you know. Um, you have to have uh, the funds to back everything up. Um, you have to be patient. I mean, th these are like five and ten year type of um, goals that you want to reach. Um, it's not something you can look at like day by day or week by week in terms of your business growing. So, uh, but, you know, as long as you're passionate, no matter what you see, you're going to just keep going. So it's not going to stop you. All right, Demetrius, I'm going to let you off the hook on that one, okay? Uh, and we're going to get to know you a little bit now. I just kind of wanted to hit you with a nice, solid question that everybody talks about. You're a publisher, so you're you're in the trenches of all this. But let's get to know you and let's get to know Black Box Comics, as everyone knows who's watched me for a while, Black Box Comics has been on board with me for many, many years. I talk about your titles all the time. So let's yeah, talk about that. a couple of your newer titles that are coming out. We have uh, Empath, which I believe is the next newest title. Can you give me the uh, elevator pitch? That's what the, uh, Jonathan likes to call it. The elevator yep. pitch of that new book. Um, so he basically um, has gone through stuff with his family that has helped trigger his uh, empathic powers um, and he decides to use them for good. And, and it basically it's with everyone he comes in contact with um, and, you know, he can't help, but to want to help and he's absorbing everyone's um, energy. So it could be anger. It could be sadness. It could be uh, um, anything in between. And um, it takes a toll on him. And, and you'll see that. Um, and it's just like regular people, you know, we feel for someone who's in our family, our friends, our coworkers, whoever. Um, and, you know, a lot of people have empathy, obviously. And, um, you know, it takes a toll on you when you try to help people. And this is, 
magnified a, a thousand times and you see what it does to him. So is this a uh, limited run? You usually do five issue runs. Is that correct? Typically five issue runs. Yes. Okay. And that's uh, what this is as well. Yeah. I think it gives uh, the writer plenty of room to tell the story that he wants to tell. Um, and we, you know, we don't want fluff. Um, we want everything to be valuable that the reader is reading. Um, and you get to see, uh, who's his surrounding um, cast, right? And then you want to learn a little bit about them. So I think that's enough room on a five-issue run. And who is the team that's on this book? Brian uh, Hawkins. He's the one who wrote uh, Empath. Um, he's written Devil's Dominion for us, Dr. Wilder. Um, and the artist is Deborah Carita. Uh, she's done some amazing work. She's done some stuff for Call of Duty, Fortnite, um, I believe Marvel and some other uh, indies as well. Um, the colorist, we have CC De La Cruz um, on issue one and two, and then we had uh, we changed colorist at some point um, because she came uh, unavailable. And uh, letterer uh, is Mika Myers, I believe I pronounced that correct, and he's excellent. He's done a or Mika. I mean, he's done a fantastic job in terms of letters. Uh, every time. If you mispronounce the names wrong, that's okay. I do it all the time. Heck, I don't even yeah. pronounce your name. Out. I'm used to it. Everybody mispronounces my name. My name never gets pronounced right. What's how do you say your last name? Zaharakis. So yeah, I, I'm, I'm trying to say it's simple for you, Zaharakis. Zaharakis. So, Zaharakis. Yeah. Zaharakis. yeah, I think it's kind of easy if you do it uh, every, you know, every two. So it's, it makes it easy for you. But uh, uh, I give it a. Sh I try my best. That's all you're gonna get yeah. from. I mean, I, I've been just lucky and fortunate to, you know, have people like you support us, the comic shops, the fans, but uh, the creative talent that has been working with me on all these different titles has really been amazing. So I, I don't think we've put out a bad book. Um, I think everything has been of quality in terms of story and art. It all just comes down to whether is it for you? Like, do you like the type of story? Do you like the type of art? Right. It's everything subjective. So. So when do we get to see Empath in the stores? Empath should be October 25th. Okay, and that's coming out through Diamond? It's coming out through Diamond, yeah. But we can also order it on your website, blackboxcomics.net, correct? Yeah, they can do pre-orders through our website. I mean, look, some shops may not carry it or it may sell out. Um, we have a lot of people that do order. We have shops that order directly from us as well. So Yeah, and there's a code called Bueller10 that gives you 10% off your purchase, correct? That's right. So there you and, go. Uh, there, there, there's certainly been people using it, so I appreciate that from all the uh, the Bueller fans and audience. So uh, it's much appreciated. And, and I want to let people know, and I always tell people this: uh, that code that's on there, this is something that uh, Demetrius has offered. I don't get a percentage or a kickback. I don't ask for a percentage or a kickback. This is just no, for no. you people to save a little bit of money. My viewers, my audience, I want to do something special for them, and so does he. So that's right. what that's for. So, I mean, I don't have any problem with that. I like knowing that my audience gets a little bit of a deal. I've never asked for a percentage of that, and I never will. So, I mean, I appreciate that code being there for everyone to use it on all the products that are on blackboxcomics.net. Not uh, that one and all the other titles, which we're going to talk about here in a minute. But let's talk about the next one after this This one, The Dead Detective, which looks Definitely. really cool. And I don't know how much of this one you can give away because uh, it's, a, it's a ways off or whatnot. But uh, you sent, sent me some pictures, and you always do. And I always uh, am a fan of pretty much everything you sent me, to be honest. But this one looks pretty interesting. This one is kind of right up my alley. Can you give me uh, without, you know, you know, I don't know how much you can share, but go ahead and share what you can. Um, I mean, I could share because the, the you know it's out in previews already for issue one, and uh, I believe t issue two will be out as well soon. Um, so basically, it's it's two partners, as a younger partner and an older partner that are uh, investigating something, and uh, basically, I mean, it's it, it, the title self it's self explanatory, right? That detective. So one of the detectives die, um, and then what happens is about ten years later. Um, there he goes to his his grave basically and they're reunited um because he finds a portal that goes to the underworld which is like purgatory basically and from there they try to basically continue the case of who did it why they did it and uh, a lot of other things that will go on from there that i don't want to spoil 
Um, and the interesting thing about that detective, which I will spoil a little bit for everybody, but I think it's a good spoiler. It's going to be connected to a few other worlds. Um, one of them being Devil's Dominion. And I'm not saying it's being uh, done in volume one. Volume one is all about the detectives, their world building. Um, but there will be a connection at some point between these worlds. And, and you'll understand why as you read it. Devil's um, Dominion so it's, is my favorite. Uh, yeah. Devil's Dominion is great. We're actually working on, uh, we finished volume two. And we're actually working on uh, volume three is just about done. So, yeah. Um, so, beautiful book. yeah, and you, you'll see it, it's phenomenal what we've done with volume two and three. Um, and then we have another new title that will come out that I can't announce yet, but that will also have some attachment to these two titles that we just talked about. So the big black box comics world is all coming together. It is. I have a massive cloud that I've connected all over the place. Uh, but I, I want to make sure that it, ma it, it makes sense to do it. It's not just to feature them for no reason. There, there's real reason as to why I'm doing it. And, um, you know, I've had plans as to these worlds that I'm building as to connect them, and how they yeah. connect. And so it, is, it, it's going to be nice when it all comes out. Is Biggs and Tiny going to make an appearance in that world? <laughs> uh, I haven't planned Bigs and Tiny, but they do have a connection elsewhere. Okay, they have a connection cool. elsewhere. So, who's the team on uh, Dead Detective? Dead Detective is uh, Fabio Lima Jansen is the artist. The writer is Bob Hayoka. Um, colorist is Adriano Lima. Um, I'm sorry, Adriano Augusto. I apologize. Um, and the letterer is Desi Cienti. He, so Desi's done work for me uh, on, on a few other books as well. Nice. Like he did Ninja Kaidan, he was a letterer on. So when do we get to see Dead Detective in the show? So this comes out after Empath? The month after. So we're going to have, for four months at least, there'll be an overlap of both titles being out. And I know you've asked me about having multiple titles out multiple times. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so I figured you'd be happy now that we did this at least. Just so uh, everyone knows, me and this man right here have had many conversations offline about uh, comic books and publishing and all this stuff. Every now and then he listens to me, uh, but every now and then he doesn't. But uh, they're just ideas that I think might work. And uh, but he's open to my suggestions, and I want to say thank you for that, my friend. I, I do appreciate it. No, no problem. I listen to everybody, man. It's, you know, and you deserve it. You know, you've been uh, tremendous help, uh, supportive, and everything you've done. So we really appreciate you. Well, thank you, sir. Let's go ahead and get back to uh, some other books real quick. And we're actually going to go through your, your entire library. But let's talk about one that's very special to me, obviously, uh, Dream Master, which was your latest book to come out. It's, it's run the series. The, the first volume is done. But that was the latest book that was on the shelf. Dream Master, and I'll just tell the story again. It doesn't exist without me. <laughs> You're the main man. You're the main man. You're um, behind it all. <laughs> yeah, that's not exactly true. I just put two pieces together, uh, but this man right here had the idea. And then uh, our good friend Jonathan, who is the writer of that book, was also a friend of mine. And Jonathan was looking for work, and the two came together. And before you knew it, I think it was over the weekend of the MegaCon, you guys had worked it out. And uh, I introduced you guys, and, and I was so happy that he, he was on the book. And I know your your idea, you had pitched it to me before. I was excited to see him run with it. And, uh, you know, it was a great series. I really enjoyed it. I'm looking forward to Volume 2 and Volume 3, especially Volume 3, because I've been told that Volume 3 will feature a certain character. I don't know if he's just blowing smoke. but We'll find out, I guess, right? I <laughs> I don't know, but let, let me ask you something real quick, because all, all these titles that you have, and you got about a little over a dozen books right here. Are you the idea man behind every title? Uh, so the concepts are by me, um, and obviously I can't, you know, do any of this stuff without the amazing talent we've had. So they've they've helped tremendously on, you know, uh, bringing these people to life, all these characters and everybody adds something to to that to make it better you know so it's not like oh it's all me it's impossible to be all me 
you know, and there's no way that that is. So um, I'm just, you know, very grateful for everybody on the team that's helped me do all this. Nice. Very nice. Well, I like Dream Master, personal favorite of mine. Obviously, it's going to be, you know, for a while. And uh, I, I, I hope I make an appearance in that book. And I just kind of drill this into these guys' head all the time. And hopefully someday it happens. If it doesn't happen, that's okay. Because I've already so, made the cover of a couple other books. But the black box, the, I have to crack that one to get in there and be, a, be in one of those books. I think that's, that's my main goal for 2024. So I guess we'll have to wait and see. Well, I mean, uh, you know, Dream Master has been a hot book for us. And, yeah. you know, I, I can't wait for volume two and three. Uh, you know, we have, uh, we, I mean, we, I, I've told you a little bit about the story. Uh, we're working very hard behind the scenes. Yeah. And, uh, we're talking to a lot of people and trying to get all these properties developed, basically. So hopefully all that, you know, comes to fruition at some point. Um, right now is the writer strike which is a yep. big thing. So I'm hoping everything works out for all the writers and actors and everybody gets paid what they deserve. And there's, of course, there's other things that are attached to it, like AI and several other things. But yeah, once that's over, we could all like continue to resume talk. So uh, I have the, uh, good things I think coming for black box. Yeah. The, the dream master book is very stylish. It's very, it has its own identity. Just the, the, the world inside there, the artist, the, uh, I'm forgetting the guy's name, but I, I Luigi Barricelli, yeah, Luigi, and it's just amazing, you know, just the detail, you know, the the ground is mattresses and stuff like that. You don't pick up on these details until you look at it two or three times, you know, and it's like, oh my gosh! And I remember yeah, you used to you used a picture of a of an interior artwork. I said, dude, that's a cover right there. That is a cover. Yeah. It was so good. And to, to pair that with Jonathan's writing, I think it's a it's an awesome book. I think pretty much everyone who's who got a, their hands on it, and this is yeah. why it's really important for people who are watching. If you're looking for these books, go and pre-order them at your comic shop because a lot of comic shops, you know, they 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 order they order Marvel, they order DC, and they order Image and a couple other ones, and sometimes they skip some of these smaller independent books, and you're missing out because there's some really good talented people working on these books. So if you go to your comic shop, let them know that, hey, carry Black Box Comics, you know, or order them directly through Black Box. There's a couple different options. But Dream right. Master by far is probably my favorite book. I'm biased. I'll just tell you right now. No, you know, I mean, I think it's like a must-read book. I mean, I think that is just an excellent series. I mean, we all yeah. have dreams and nightmares, and I feel like it's something that we could all kind of relate to, you know, from that aspect. Um, and the art is just outstanding. Luigi's like a rock star, and Jonathan's amazing. He wrote a great story and you know, the whole team just meshed really well. So we, we all talk on a, like a chat and you know, it's just, there's never any problems. It's just That's one right. great idea after the other with the team. So I definitely appreciate them a lot. That's awesome. So let's go ahead and run down your uh, library of books that you have. And these are all available on the website, blackboxcomics.net. I always want to let people know it's .net. It's not .com. It's .net. You got to remember that part. But the first one you guys ever put out was IT. And was that an original uh, concept you had? Yeah. So um, I I was doing banking for basically over 18 years. And uh, it was what I knew well that allowed me to come into this industry and, 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 and be comfortable with something that I'm familiar with. Yeah. And um, – you know, I, I work with everybody on that team was basically from like Marvel or DC pretty much. And luckily that benefits me because that's just amazing talent that made my job easier and made it easier to just blend in with everything and, and learn. Uh, and so being in IT, I was the CIO in banking, uh, which is a chief information officer. Uh, so, you know, it's basically I, I, IT and information security. So with all the experience that I had and knowledge I had, I, I thought that I would do a fun little book about that. And uh, funny thing is, I mean, that's one of the books that a lot of studios have been uh, talking about. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. I mean, you never know what uh, people will go for and, and, yeah. and reach for to, to pick. So we'll see. And you, you just mentioned that the studios have talked to you about some of your properties and stuff like that. Yeah. And, uh, you know, that's the big thing if something gets optioned um i you know as far as information what we can provide i can tell people that 
like you just said, studios are talking to Black Box Comics. Yeah. There is interest there. And that's oh, kind yeah. of a, in the collector's market, that's a big deal. And uh, me sure. and you have talked about this uh, f- many different times. Obviously, the writer's strike going on in Hollywood yeah. has halted a lot of stuff. But, right. uh, you know, without giving out too much detail, these properties that this man has brought to the table, the Hollywood has interest in them. And I think right. that's pretty cool that uh, that's the level of books that you're putting out there. That you're attracting that, that audience to these books. So congratulations. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah. I mean, we have something for everybody. So, uh, you know, when you look at the library, you'll see it's diverse, you know, yeah. and I'm not, uh, obviously our characters are diverse. Our teams are diverse, but the genres that we've tried to hit, you know, they're all a little different. So. Well, your second one was a uh, cyclist, correct? Um, I believe that was the third. I think militia was the second and then cyclist. Militia, I liked quite a bit. That was actually kind of a, a fun uh, one as well. Um, can you yeah. give me a quick uh, pitch on militia? So militia's basically it was about the experience of a female in the military. Every time we talk about the military, who I'm tremendously grateful for all their service, um, I thought it'd be good to take the view from a female standpoint and see what do they go through, what are the challenges, what uh, kind of missions are they sent on, how are they treated. Uh, so uh, making, you know, Militia as the main character, I thought was just yeah. awesome. And when I got the scripts and I read them, I just thought, you know, he, uh, it was just an amazing script. You you could see it as you're reading it, like as a movie or a show, like you could see that yeah. happen. Very so, cool. yeah, it was a, a definitely a fun read. The other one that uh, you had mentioned is Psycho List, and that's actually the first one that came to my attention uh, when I saw it on the shelf and saw recognized the Black Box comics. Uh, what can you tell me about Psycho List? So Psycho List is written by Kevin Grievous. Uh, he was the one who created the movie Underworld, I, Frankenstein. Mm-hmm. I believe he was a producer as well on all those. Um, so it's about a former FBI agent that becomes a therapist and gets involved in his patients' lives. Um, and he gets called back for a special case. So um, that's the elevator pitch, basically. And um, we do plan on continuing that series as well at some point. It's just that I'm working on so many. Um, so it's hard to continue everything at the same time. But I, I believe we will at some point. Um, so right now we're working on 15 titles, just so you know. <laughs> a psycho list. Was that the first one that you guys did with the shiny cover? Uh. Yes, I believe that was the first shiny cover we did, yes. Such an awesome cover. Such an awesome yeah. cover. You know how I am with those. <laughs> yeah, I mean, issue one and two sold out, like, before it even, like, hit stores. And it, it was like, we had a really great response to it. And, um, you know, it, that would make, like, a great show. Um, so, you know, a lot of people jumped on it. And I, I'm happy that, you know, everyone jumped on it and, and got a copy. And um, we did a second print which I still have some. I don't think it's a whole lot, but I still have some uh, left over, and we'll see. We'll see where we go from there. Moving on to Project Icarus, which is more of an anime, uh, not the anime as far as when you're looking at the covers and stuff like that. Uh, can you tell me about that book? I didn't actually get too much in, into that book, but am I uh, around the same area? So um, Project Icarus is basically about prisoners that, are being experimented on that get superpowers and the main character, which is Max has to go out and either bring them back after they escape or kill them off. Um, the art was done by Patrick Blaine and written by Andy Owens. They've both been in the industry like 20, 30 years. And, uh, you know, they've worked for Marvel, DC, Top Cow. Um, so again, it's just, uh, I'm lucky that I just have good people on each team for each book. Yeah. Um, so I thought it was just well done and a lot of action, uh, violence in it. Um, so, you know, that, that I would probably say was the first one that had some form of superpowers in it, sure. uh, and from our titles. Nice. Next one is a personal favorite, Bigs and Tiny. Um, uh, I've talked to you about this one. It's, it's just kind of a fun book, uh, to have two different characters, actually three different characters get involved. Uh, but uh, can you go ahead and run down that one a little bit for us? Um, they they get experimented on. They're caught what at the, some point. 
What's up with all these experiments? Is something, is something you're so, writing? So there's a connection. Okay. Remember I mentioned before. That's right. So, um, but the, these two end up becoming like basically best friends. And I, I, I kind of based it on some of the friendships I have with people who are like six foot six and six foot five. And <laughs> I, I just got some really tall friends and, you know, there's always banter with the taller people and, and Wait, jokes. Are, and, are, are you a little guy? I'm not that little. Come on, man. I don't I mean, I've never seen you standing up or whatnot, you know? No, so I'm, five, I'm five, seven. I'm five, seven. So okay, yeah, yeah, you're a little, you're a little. Okay. But, uh, yeah, but I mean, everybody's like, these people are tall, I'm not like monsters. So there's always banner between me and them. And it's just a lot of, uh, about, a, it's like a com comedic duo. I mean, it's just irresponsible a bit, which I think we would all kind of be in that way. And we'd probably find it funny to have those powers and do probably some silly things with it. And, um, and, and, and make an example out of anybody who's a criminal, you know? And, um, I don't know, you've probably seen like the, some of the covers and things like that, what we did with them. So, um, I, I just, I, you know, it's, it's just a ta different take on being a hero, you know? Yeah. And there was a, I believe I'm not mistaken. Um, I know this because I went to this comic shop, but there was a comic shop in, uh, Idaho that did an exclusive cover for bigs and tiny, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, that was the collector's post, and I believe the yeah. gentleman's name is Tom, I think, that yeah. runs it. Yeah, Really nice guy. Um, yeah, we did something for someone, I believe, that worked for him, that was an artist. And um, I felt like it was good to give like a local artist like a opportunity to do a cover. I, you know, yeah. it's his first big thing. So I, I thought it was great that we got to do that. And it was even on the Ohio News or something. Nice. Uh, they were being interviewed for it, so I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah, that, that shop is in Boise. There's not too many shops. There's only like two or three shops in Boise. And that shop is awesome. They opened like a week before COVID hit. Beautiful. <laughs> yeah, had, unfortunately. Down. And then, uh, but they have like a, th at least last time I was there, they have a 3D uh, virtual uh, reality uh, unit where you can stand in and kind of walk around and play games and stuff. It's just an awesome, awesome uh, shop. And the reason why beautiful I, I shop because they have a coffee shop inside the comic book shop. Right. So it's a combination of coffee shop slash comic book shop. So if you're in the boys. Yeah. Uh, yeah I mean, I think it's a nice touch to have like coffee and comics, you know, it's just, I feel like it just goes. <laughs> yeah. It just does. I think you're talking to the right guy. So you, you need to make sure everyone else has coffee. Every yeah, comic yeah. shop you go to. That's right. They're right there. Uh, right there. Yeah, I mean, you need to offer more than one thing. I think these days it's 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 a tough market. So, having yeah. that for people to sit down and grab something to read, grab something to drink, maybe even eat. You know, it's it's yeah. it's a nice add-on. Um, the Bigs and Bigs and Tiny also was uh, like picked up as a a story on uh, the Sci-Fi Channel. They did an article on it. Oh, nice. So yeah, so I thought that was cool too um, to to be noticed for that. So I, I appreciated that, and 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 it came out during COVID, which I thought would be good to cheer everybody up at that time. Uh, I was actually talking to Larry Lieber. He was doing a signing and I was actually helping him out. Uh, and he was telling me like, you know, people need something to laugh about, something to smile, especially right now. And I thought that was like the perfect book to come out at that time, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I really liked it. I thought it was a really, it was fun. You know, it wasn't too serious, you know, and the, the really in, interesting characters that get involved. I like the whole bigs and tiny dynamic and stuff like that. So I told you right away, I was like, man, this was really good. So, and yeah. I've been honest with you, there's been some books I have, I haven't really connected with. Right. And uh, well, that's okay. But, and then some, like you said, you have something for everyone. Right. And the next one we're going to talk about is a one I did enjoy devil's dominion, which I thought was great. And the artwork in this one was just off the pages. And then you made the variant covers for this one, and then you made the shiny covers for this one, and you kept sending them to me. And I just was like, these are so good. They're so good. But yeah, I, amazing. I, I, I share my stuff about. because I love what I do, right? So it's like it's yeah. fun to to show this to people that will enjoy it, you know? Yeah. So you're one of them, obviously. So yeah, I have the whatever the set is for the shiny covers for Devil's Dominion. I have those all, plus the other variants and stuff like that. Those are very special. But give me a, a quick pitch on the Devil's Dominion. Devil's Dominion is 
Uh, basically, uh, Devlin is the main character, Dev- Devlin St. Paul, and um, there was something that you know happened to her, and the devil basically came along and is offered an ex- help. An experiment? <laughs> no, it's not an experiment. Before we, <laughs> stop, before we start experimenting on you, uh, <laughs> so they uh, she basically reneged on the deal and started going after people with demons, and. Because basically she didn't want those horrors to happen to anyone else. Yeah. Um, and she was capable of helping people. So, it's But a, she had a, her own struggles with the demon. So it's, uh, it, it's, it's quite an interesting series that, like I mentioned before, we, we continued on volume two and three. And people, I think people are really going to love that, that series yeah. and see where that character goes. Any time frame on when we see volume two? Uh, definitely next year. Okay. Sounds I believe I believe it's scheduled for right after um, either Empath or Dead Detective. Once those finish, I believe. Nice. Uh, this next one was actually Bob's favorite. Uh, my buddy Bob, Everything Comics was from the uh, uh, Copy and Comics uh, Weekly Show we used to do, which is Shinokage. Is that right? I hear Shinokage, Shinokaye. Uh, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I, I say ask ask the team. <laughs> Neil know. and um, Gus, they're the ones who worked on it. Um, that actually is the only title that um, I've published that I have nothing to do with uh, concept or anything like that. They they did everything from A to Z. They did an amazing job. And when they pitched it to me, I just I loved it so much. I was like, we gotta we gotta publish yeah. this. And I thought it was a great book. It did re- very well. Now that ran for more than five issues, if I'm not mistaken. Um, yeah, they, they did seven issues. Okay, seven issues. Uh, old, which and is I, be- I believe they're looking forward to doing more. So, yeah, like I said, that was Bob's favorite one. He loves samurais and uh, yeah. that type of style. There was, uh, I don't, correct me if I'm wrong, but there was a wonderful David Mack cover for, uh, I believe it was issue one, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Did you make, I don't know, if, I think it's in my collection. Did you make a shiny foil version of that? I did. I, um, I never, I, I don't think I've made it available um, yet. Really? So I, I have I, that. Don't I yeah, have that? I, I think I think only like a few people have it. I don't think too many people have it. Dude, that's all. I didn't know that. That's, right. <laughs> it's really cool. For one, yeah. David Mack, if you look at like, so this is kind of interesting. So if you look at that cover, and David Mack has his own style, obviously. Yeah. And it has the, the character on there and stuff. And then he went and then uh, recently, just a few months back, he did the Spawn covers for all four different Spawn books. And they mm-hmm. literally look like the Shino Kagi cover. All four of them look exactly like the, the, the one that he did for you the year before. And stuff. Yeah, the similarity. I remember you uh, sent it to me. Yeah. So, I mean, it's just interesting to see that. But uh, I guess I have the shiny one, which is awesome. I did not know. So, it sounds like... I, they're going to continue the story? Is it not there? Yeah, there's plans to continue. Okay. okay. Very nice. Um, next one we have is Gin Hunter. Did I say that right? Yeah. Okay, because I never know. There's a there's a silent D. Is that such a thing? Is a silent Gin Hunter. D? Gin Hunter. That's it. Is it, is it. I didn't know. I didn't learn in grammar where there's a silent D. Okay. So, She's a gin. Okay. <laughs> Gin Hunter, awesome, uh, beautiful book. The colors in this book are just amazing. And also another book that you did a bunch of shiny covers for as well and a bunch of different variants. Uh, yeah, can you yeah, kind of, yeah. uh, talk about that one also? So the creative team is Jay Salen as the artist, uh, Fabrizio Cosentino is the, I mean, Fabrizio Cosentino is the artist, Jay Salen is the writer. Uh, we have Sina Ayel who helped on, on script edits um and obviously me and basically the premise of it is a, a she's a genie bounty hunter going after genies giving bad wishes to people so it's it's be careful what you wish for yeah um so that i believe cbr had as the number one book of the year uh might have been like most anticipated something like that they had a list so that was cool that we were being recognized um and that was number one in that year, and Devil's Dominion came out right before it, so Devil's Dominion was number 10. Yeah. So I thought it was cool we had two books in their top 10 lists. That's awesome. Beautiful books. Beautiful books. Yeah. yeah. 
What else we got here on the? Oh, here's another one. This is the Ninja Kaiden. Ninja Kaiden, which was one of what I actually had my first black box comics exclusive with that with that book, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. Thank you. Well, shout out to whatnot, I guess. I'll throw that out there. <laughs> But uh, that one kind of is a, uh, I look at it as like Snake Eyes meets uh, Tony Stark. Yeah, I mean, I guess I could see that, yeah. I could see that. <laughs> Give me a little bite on that one. What's, what's the take? Um, so the team, Eric Palicki he's the writer, a really cool dude. Uh, we've done a lot of uh, back and forth going on that and working on the scripts. And he's just an amazing writer that I, I was able to like trust and he could like kind of run with it um and the the artist is lucas mayer and lucas has been working for dc recently he's doing i think he did like titan's blood and some other uh new titles he's working on now for them uh, so he's an amazing artist also a really nice person easy to work with um colorist was uh, michael bartolo and desi santi did the the letters on that um so it's basically a suit that they've that his father built with the company um, and it's allowed him to speak, see, touch ghosts. Um, so basically interaction and, um, eventually he sees his father as, as a ghost and, and, you know, there's like trials and, and things like that, that he has to go through and deal with. Um, so I, I thought that was a really cool, uh, character. Nice. He has a nice mysterious look to him. Um, he's got a different type of weapon that you don't typically see. Yeah. Uh, you know, and, um, you know, everything that we do, we try to make it unique, like something that's just not really that's out there, you know. Um, so, you know, like Gene, Gene Hunter is different. I think Devil's Dominion is different. IT is very different. So we, we, we do try to be unique. And um, I know we talked about the one ish, one title a month kind of thing that we do. But one of the big reasons for that is for quality. Right. We want to give you something different and we want to do the best job we possibly can on each title. Well, the last book in your library is Dr. Wilder, and uh, this is a female lead that is, uh, she's an animal rights activist, and uh, I'll kind of let you take it from there. Now, this one, I'll be honest, it didn't really hit home with me, but this one you found an audience. It does have an audience, and, and I think it's a very underappreciated uh, book because, you know, N Ninja Kaidan and Jin Hunter and Dream Master are like the, they steal the show, right? And um, the art on that, uh, Umberto Giampa did an amazing job. Um, Brian Hawkins uh, wrote the scripts. Um, and basically, she has created a team, and they're hired to uh, uncover corruption with animals. Animals are being killed, almost extinct. Um, there's cloning involved, um, and they try to get to the bottom of it, and they have their own um, challenges to deal with. So... Um, I mean, someone compared it to like, like G.I. Joe meets Ace Ventura or something like that. <laughs> um, but, you know, it, it, it is a, a really good, fun book. And if you love animals, I mean, I'm sure you'll enjoy it. I'm, I'm, I'm an animal lover. I've yeah. got two cats that we've rescued and we have a dog. And obviously, you see behind me, we've got fish. So okay. I, I don't know what's missing. Probably a pig is next. Who knows? A uh, snake. <laughs> what about a snake? No snakes? No snakes. No. That's all right. I'm not a fan of snakes, so it's okay. But yeah, I think yeah. we've kind of hit all the books in your li library so far, if I'm not mistaken. I'm, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Um, pretty sure but no, I want to get to know Black Box Comics, the publisher, a little bit more after we hit the titles. And since you're the, you're the face, I mean, you're, the, you're, you're Black Box Comics, okay? I want to know. Like who is there anyone else behind Black Box Comics? I mean, I, I know the writers, the artists, and all that stuff, but we're talking about you, the publisher, okay? Like when I go to the website and I order a book, what are you doing on your end? Are you are you packing this order? Are you I'm, doing all this stuff? I'm doing everything, man. So everything. So pretty much <laughs> it's on your shoulders, right? Um, I'm I'm, a, I'm pretty much A to Z. A to Z. Okay, that's kind of what I, I wanted. I knew this, by the and way. And I'm talking, obviously, we're talking the back end, right? Like yes, marketing and, and, and contracts and, you know, it's just everything. So, yeah, it's so a lot of work. It's a lot of work. Um, but, again, I'm passionate about what I'm doing. I love what I'm doing. Yeah. And somebody needs to do that, and it's got to be somebody who cares, who 
uh, has in, invested into it. Um, so, you know, I'm going to work as hard as I can to, to, to make it happen. Yeah. So it's basically you, your family, putting your kids to work every now and then. Everybody's a volunteer. Yeah, that's right. They're volunteers. Oh, yeah, there you go. They're volunteers. But they, I don't just, get, they don't get credits. They, they, get, <laughs> they get volunteers. I just wanted to make sure that, that we pointed that out because a lot of people think, oh, they're a publisher. They got these people all in the, in the office and stuff. No, no this, is a, this is literally one guy who had a vision and he's trying to bring it to the market and so far has done a very good job. And I, yeah. I have much respect for doing that because it's not sure. an easy thing. Like I said, people don't get into this just to make money. They get into this because they have a passion and they have a feeling for it. They want to do it. You know, you're not getting rich on what you're doing here. Okay. No. It'd be no. nice. You get rich on it right. eventually, but you know, like there's other, uh, there's other avenues you could go down where you'd make a lot more money and it'll probably Absolutely. work not have as much stress on your plate. So I just want to take a minute and let people know this is the guy when you're ordering on black box comics, he's putting your order together. He's putting the books together. He's making sure the marketing is out there. He's at the comic cons promoting his books. It's not a staff. It's this guy and volunteers that he, he gets that are living in the same household. It's pretty much what it is. Yeah. I mean, look, we mentioned my family for a second and like, obviously without them, I couldn't do what I do, you know? They're very supportive of what I'm doing and they know I love it and they've grown. They, they love it. Um, and my kids are young. So like they're starting to see all this and get into it and trying to learn more about it. So it's fun. You know, um, it's one of those things that you get to live through with your kids uh, that a lot of dads do and try to jo enjoy shows or movies with them that we watched growing up. And yeah. now they get to enjoy one of the hobbies I, I grew up on. So nice. So what is your goal for Black Box Comics? I mean, I mean, if you could look in the mirror or ask some genie or something like that, um, five years down the road, what is the goal for Black Box Comics? Um, well, obviously, our, everybody has, and I just want to be straight up, everybody has the goal and the vision of wanting to develop a film. And uh, the great thing about that is you, you get to uh see things um maybe from a slightly different perspective because you got other writers involved and uh it'll branch out to more people that will learn more about the characters and hopefully that will bring more customers towards comics um and we want to be able to tell stories that resonate with people that um maybe things that they've dealt with they've seen the that they feel uh very you know closely about like having characters that represent them um so we, we, we're trying to do a little bit of everything. The one thing that I know I have to do better at is make more books for the younger audience. Um, so it's not that we're doing, you know, yeah. uh, adult type of books in, in, in terms of, you know, the maturity level of that. Um, but we're trying, I want to do some stuff for the younger audience, you know, teenagers um, and even younger. Um, so I am working on that. And I do have one title that will come out um next year actually um and it's like robots basically and, and i think the younger audience will enjoy it but i think it's something the adult crowd could uh, enjoy as well uh, this just came to my mind you know like you said you have uh, all these ideas and then you uh get these great writers and artists to bring these uh to life and stuff what goes on in your brain I mean, that's a, that's a lot of weird stuff, man. Are you, <laughs> what's the dinner conversation like? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> my, my wife said I'm like an ATM of ideas or something like that. She said to me, um, I, I can't help it. My brain just, it's constantly working and, and, and I think of stuff. And if I think I, um, thought of something that was worth pursuing, um, I'll either, you know, obviously create it or I'll, I'll build on it and, and wait yeah. till I think it's the right time for it. Um, and yeah, I, I think experiences kind of help you get to these things, right? We all have a different experience in life and therefore our thoughts come with these creative ideas. And, you know, um, obviously it was an actual experience, right? Like where I worked yeah. in banking and that experience with comics and, and other things that I may have experienced in life helped lead me to everything else, you know? Yeah. So, um, it's just, it doesn't stop. I'll, I'll say that. Uh, yeah. definitely don't stop thinking i got a couple more industry questions before we wrap things up i want to hear from you 
with all the rise of more than one public, or I'm sorry, one more than one distributor, um, how are you balancing that? I mean, you know, a lot of times we're like, oh, we need more than one. You know, it was just Diamond for a very, very long time, and we're and you heard all the saying, man, they monopolized the market and stuff. Well, now we have multiple different uh, distributors. Is that better for the market, or is that just money to the waters? Um, I think it'll eventually be better for the market. Um, I think it's just right now is everybody's just adjusting still, trying to figure it out. Uh, probably Diamond, I'm going to assume now, has more time, so they'll be hopefully focusing on indies to raise them to the next level um, yeah. and, and, and give some of the perks and the, the options that maybe they were giving to the big two or whoever else. Uh, so I, I think it could be beneficial from that standpoint. Uh, but the indies, I'm sure, also want to get into the other distributors because there are some shops that probably maybe they don't order from Diamond any- anymore or they prefer to only order from, let's say, Lunar this month because depending what books are on the market. Um, so, you know, it's it, it's tough. It's a, it, it is a tough time, but I think it's all going to adjust and everything will fall into place that it needs to. Well, before we wrap things up, I want to circle back around to some of your uh, recent titles that are going to hit the uh, shelf again, kind of give you the floor. So the one we're going to see next is Empath. You want to give us an, another uh, little uh, pitch on that one? Sure. I'll, I'll actually read off the uh, synopsis that we actually created for it. Sure. Uh, an estranged son from a wealthy family finds his place in a chaotic city full of vagabonds and wayward individuals. But as much as his family is in his past, his reasons for leaving them behind drives his everyday choices and fuels not only the desire to help others, but also his uncanny and empowered empathic abilities to change things for the better. The city's ills may prove too great for him as both an emotional and physical battle awaits. There you go. You're a good reader, man. I am? Sure. <laughs> yeah, that sounds good. So when does that hit again? October? Uh, what That's that October be? 25th. October 25th. Are we getting yeah. multiple covers for this one? Yeah, you are. Um, we actually have a, a cover by Billy Tan, if you're familiar with him. He worked uh, for Marvel and DC. He did, I think, Shadowland for uh, Marvel and Green Lantern Corps for DC. Um, and I believe he's doing something on his own right now. Um, but yeah, he did a nice cover. Uh, I've known him for years. I bought art from him. Yeah. Um, so I, I thought he made a really cool cover. And then we have another cover by Tiago da Silva, who's also done a few covers for us. And he's doing multiple covers for Marvel and DC as well. Um, so he's done some phenomenal stuff for us. So yeah, I mean, I think everyone's going to like the covers that they've created. Very cool. So this will be at your local comic shops. You can go order them right now through previews or let your comic shop know that you want these. You can also go to blackboxcomics.net. You can pre-order them there as well. What's the cover price on this book? Is it, uh, I can't remember there, what it was. It's four ninety nine on cover A. And like I said, if you go to blackboxcomics.net and it's called Bueller 10, you save 10% off, so you get it for a little bit cheaper. Yeah, the not? next book after this one, and like I said, we're going to get Overlap, which is something we talked about, which is awesome, because getting that name out there is important. We got Dead Detective, so let me, uh, I'll give it to you. Tell us a little bit more about that one before we go. Okay, so Dead Detective is, uh, while investigating the death of his partner, a a detective discovers a portal to the afterlife. Reunited in the underworld, they must solve the mystery of a demonic cult and save the city of Detroit from the forces of evil. There you go. Why Detroit? That's just where the portal is. Okay. (laughs) That's a lot of portals end up in Detroit, apparently. I, I guess so. There you go. So when does this one come out in November? November 22nd, and there's a, a cover A is by Fabio Lima Jansen, who's the artist. He also did cover B, but we did a wraparound, um, and uh, uh, that cover looks amazing. And for cover C is by Tiago, and you see these, the oh, yeah. little bit of a spoiler. It's the villain cover, and you'll oh, see wow. that, um, which I, I love that cover. That's a, a really nice cover. Very cool. And so you can actually you go to previews, uh, pre-order this right now. Let your comic shop know. Like I said before, go to uh, blackboxcomics.net. You can order them there as well. Use that code BR10 to save you some money. Why not, right? Yep. I, I highly suggest so. Um, and it's good because then, you know, we know that it's all coming from you too when they use that code. Yeah. You know? So it's a nice indication. It's a win-win. So that's pretty awesome. 
It is. It is. Well, you know what? We're going to wrap things up. We're going to call it good. I just want to take a moment to tell you, uh, thank you so much for all your support. Uh, thank, you. thank you for reaching out to me many years ago. And we've built a really great relationship. I know that you like to be involved in the community. I want to say thank you for, uh, I know that you donated a bunch of books for uh, comics curing cancer. Uh, yeah. So yeah. I wanted to say thank you for doing that. That's a, that goes to a good cause. You know, we, we a personal friend of mine, I think I've talked to you. How did uh, you Jan. find out? I didn't even know that you knew that. <laughs> I know everything. You're everywhere. I tell people all the time, I never ask questions I don't know the answers for. Yeah, it's, it's we're, like, we're actually working with a, a, a few charities um, right now. So we're trying to do a little more and help out the community, get more books to troops, yeah. um, getting books to kids, uh, getting books to other people that uh, would need it, could afford it, and could do something good at the same time as part of the charity, which is wonderful. So That's awesome, man. You, you do, you're a good guy. You're a good man. And I, I like working with, with uh, good You can only try to do the best you can, right? That's right. So I just want to say uh, thank you for coming on the show. Is there something you want to say to the comic book audience before we go? Um, nothing other than I uh, just appreciate everyone because we wouldn't be where we are. Um, the amount of books that we've sold, the attention we've gotten, the articles, the uh, representation now that we have in Hollywood, like all this stuff is because of the fans and the retailers that have taken chances on us and continue to support us and I'm always glad to see them at when they come to shows and, and you know, they, they, they know us, they bring their books for us to sign. I mean, it's a great experience for me. So uh, I just uh, uh, have love for everybody. So I appreciate everyone. Awesome, man. Well, thank you very much. I want to thank everyone for watching. We appreciate your time. Don't forget to like and subscribe and don't forget to live your best life. Bye, everybody. Bye. Thank you, everyone.